The hardest thing to believe about this match is that it only ended 1-0, as Chelsea and Liverpool went toe-to-toe -to -toe for 120 minutes. Alongside the big chances, it was also an encounter full of tactical intrigue. So what tactics did we see from both managers? Let's begin with Chelsea in possession and Liverpool's effective pressing structure. Initially, Chelsea's build-up from the goal kick looked like this, with more traditional fullbacks and the centre-backs splitting the goalkeeper, whilst Casado was often the deepest man, and Liverpool were hyper-aggressive in their press, looking to make Chelsea uncomfortable immediately, as the wingers both pressed fairly narrow, whilst Gakpo would tie up the deepest man and also look to press the goalkeeper whenever possible. Two of the potential outlets would be the fullbacks in these positions, which we did see Chelsea use on occasion. However, Liverpool are also effective at switching to a back three temporarily to press a fullback before they can get into comfortable possession. So this wasn't always as simple as it seems. Chelsea did tend to start their build-up through De Sassi, and although Liverpool's press was successful for most of the match, it could on occasion backfire against them, because in situations such as these, it was possible to create this 3 versus 2 out wide. With Diaz on a centre-back, if Robertson was pressing higher on Gusto, it provided the opportunity to find Palmer running in behind the fullback. Although for the most part, Palmer would use his additional freedom to get onto the ball and then look to play more expansive passes into men running ahead of him. And this was also a ploy we saw be effective against Manchester City. And today, it even led to a goal disallowed for the narrowest of offsides. For the most part, however, this shape saw Chelsea be extremely vulnerable and they could build up through Colwell initially, and despite usually being good on the ball, even he struggled when being pressed aggressively by the winger. De Sassi's build-up ability on the day was disastrous, as often with Diaz aggressively looking to close him down, it led to several errors from the centre-back, either slipping or playing risky passes that would be intercepted, and this led to Liverpool getting several high-quality opportunities. Or alternatively, with the rest of the Liverpool team backing up the press in midfield and the centre-backs also pushing high, Chelsea would be forced longer, earlier than they would like. And in these 1v1 situations from the long ball, Van Dijk was often able to dominate aerially. Pochettino knew he had to change something to try and get past this aggressive press from Liverpool. And rather than a tactical change, it was a change of personnel. As we now saw Colwell move into the left-back position and it was Caicedo who dropped into left centre-back. Walter Sassi became the right back and Gusto operated in this position initially. What this meant is the goalkeeper now had two higher quality players to find with the short initial pass, who were more likely to handle the high press from Liverpool. Additionally, because the ball rarely initially went to the defensive midfielder anyway, there was less onus on De Sassi to get several touches on the ball and begin the play, and instead from here, he could take advantage of automatisms immediately bouncing the ball whenever he did receive it. In general though, the build-up through De Sassi was a big bottleneck. And one of the best ways to improve playing under pressure is by improving your scanning. And that's where Be Your Best comes in. It is the football training app in virtual reality. The main skill that Be Your Best does train is scanning, with scenarios designed to teach users every aspect of the skill. Users can work on improving their scan rate, which is how often you scan, scan timing, which involves looking away from the ball at the correct time to take in more relevant information, and critical scans, one of the hardest skills in football, the last scan that you make as the ball is traveling towards you. During training, users will also work on a number of other skills, such as decision making and enhancing your memory and awareness with regular in-game challenges. Detailed metrics are delivered after every session to help measure and track performances, and users can even watch their sessions back to analyze ways to improve using the replay analysis tool. Be Your Best is all about improving your game intelligence, and that's exactly why it's trusted by thousands of players and clubs all over the world. So if you want to become a more calm, composed player, you can get 20% off your first month or first year using the code FMS20 at checkout. Just go to beyourbest.com to get started. The link is also in the description. And thanks to Be Your Best for sponsoring this video. Even in more controlled open play situations, Liverpool had that aggressive high line and Chelsea were looking to play in behind as often as they could, relying on the pace of Jackson and Sterling, who would often come in from the left-hand side to play alongside him, also looking to run in behind as often as he could. 
However, for the most part, Bonate and Van Dijk are excellent 1v1 defenders and handled these situations expertly. But still, no one's perfect and Chelsea did get into highly dangerous situations on a couple of occasions. In open play situations, the Liverpool defensive shape adapted, as without a third man in the build-up, they'd only need two men pressing, meaning that Diaz would begin deeper much more often, whilst Gakpo could be joined by Elliot, who would look to cover two men at once. The right-hand side was where a lot of danger on the ball came from Chelsea, through the combination of Gusto and Palmer, as the overlapping fullback would often present the opportunity for Palmer to tuck infield. Particularly if Diaz was higher, this caused several problems, as it would mean that Gusto could potentially be found on the overlap by Palmer, but just as dangerous was the fact that the overlap would grant Palmer more time, and when he cut infield, he would get his head up. This was made highly effective by the fact that Chelsea looked to overload the box as often as they could, with Sterling being a nominal winger, coming central as often as he could with Chilwell providing the width instead. Enzo from the midfield as well as Gallagher would be joining in, and we did see Palmer play piercing passes into the box, leading to near goal scoring situations. The natural downside of this, however, is that Chelsea could look vulnerable in the wide areas on the transition, with Diaz and the right wingers having much success running in behind. And a lot of Chelsea's own threat came on the transition. So let's touch on what Liverpool did on the ball and what Chelsea were trying defensively. Liverpool were brave on the ball, building with just two centre-backs and the full-backs beginning initially higher. Once again, Chelsea's main goal would be to protect the centre of the pitch and this was done by playing narrowly with Gallagher being tasked with tying up the deepest pivot in Endo, whilst Jackson would be just off the right most of the time, ready to press a centre-back, and Sterling would come in off the left, and Palmer operated slightly more central than we usually see wingers defend. This allowed them to apply pressure to the centre-backs, whilst making it difficult to play through the centre. But a manager as good as Klopp was already looking for solutions. So with Gallagher being dedicated on Endo, we saw McAllister begin to operate deeper and deeper as a second pivot. Whilst Bradley would push high up at times, allowing Elliot to join that midfield, once again with the goal of overloading it. In the earlier parts of the match, when McAllister was found in these positions, Fernandez was highly aggressive in looking to press him immediately. This was risky as if he did not get his timing spot on, the likes of Elliot or Bradley, as they often rotated, would be found in these situations and Caicedo would be struggling. But that was just the beginning of things, as Elliot could start wider and Bradley would be an easy option to find, as Sterling was that narrow, and he could then progress up the pitch, looking to create a 2 versus one against Chilwell. Alternatively, if a man was found wider, it also presented an opportunity for Liverpool to get into the midfield, and this was whenever a midfielder instead came across to cover, as now, a gap had been opened in the centre of the pitch, where a Liverpool man could then be found to look to make the difference by slipping in a man higher up. But the Gravenberch injury slightly altered the Liverpool shape, especially with limited options off of the bench. Klopp still wanted Bradley to offer the width, as this also allowed Elliot to operate in his preferred attacking central zones. And the solution to this was to bring in Joe Gomez. But if Joe Gomez had just operated in a more traditional manner like Bradley was at times, Liverpool had lost their biggest weapon, which was the overload in the midfield region. So instead, Gomez looked to invert much more regularly than we saw with Bradley allowing Bradley to still remain wide, Elliot to still tuck in, whilst McAllister was now operating high off the left-hand side, once again ensuring they still had their midfield box. If Fernandes was still looking to press aggressively, it presented him with that dilemma once again, where a man could be found between the lines behind him. And even if Fernandes did remain deeper, one of Liverpool's biggest threats and goals throughout the 90 was to overload the Chelsea double pivot. And this was done in several ways, as we could see Diaz operating much more centrally, particularly early in the match. And this gave Gakpo the freedom to look for spaces between the lines to try and make it a 3 versus 2. And at times Liverpool were almost effortlessly able to get between the lines. With natural width on the other side, it also gave them the potential to overload the box and look to get on the end of crosses. With one or both fullbacks out of position, 
it left them extremely vulnerable on the transition, both on the right and the left. However, with Palmer operating deeper and their left winger still being high from his pressing position, this was the scenario that caused Liverpool the most danger, as Chelsea time and again would look to find the left winger as quickly as they could, and this would drag Konate across, whilst runners looked to make their way up the pitch. Chelsea got into good positions, but could never find that final pass. Despite the abundance of chances both sides had, it ended up being a set piece that sealed the first trophy of potentially several in Klopp's goodbye season. Comment down below how many trophies you think the Reds will win this season. For the managerial tactical score, this was a thrilling encounter, but both sides also left themselves extremely vulnerable on the transition, and on a different day, the result could have been flipped, meaning that Klopp earns a 7, was Poch earns a 6, but drop your ratings down below. And speaking of Klopp, if you enjoyed this video, you'll love this one, looking at how Klopp was involved in the highest quality Premier League match of all time.